SoFloRadio.com and SoFloTelevision.com. Since the dawn of civilization, the elusive quest in pursuit of the perfect drink continues to evolve. Now more than ever, we reap the rewards of this passion. The perfect vintage, the finest brew, or a spirit of optimum age in class. And now, SoulFlowRadio.com invites you to discover the wonderful world of booze by the glass. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to By the Glass, show about beverage culture, coming to you every Thursday at 6 on SoFlow Radio and ByTheGlassShow.com. Another great show. I got Bob Manbor. Yes, I am. I'm Jason's over here. He's going to scream out loud, Jason. Hey, now. Hey, now. We got um, the Daily Beer Review. He's here daily to be review the beer, baby. And I'm very, very happy to have Mr. Russ Bruner in the house. He's the long shot winner for the Sam Annals Homebrew Contest. Yeah. Russ. Thank Woo. you so much for being here. It's an absolute pleasure. Very, very happy to you be here. You are the star of the show, man. I'm seeing your face everywhere, even on the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> what about that shot, huh? So, let me talk to me about that. Did you, like, sit and have somebody, like, draw it out? How would that work? It, well, Jim, actually, the first thing he said to me was, uh, you're going to have label approval, so don't worry about it. Cool. <laughs> so, they sent it to him. I said, yeah, run with it. And then the, the creepiest thing so far is, uh, have you seen the banners of Total Wine? I have seen those. That's big. It must be That's creepy big for face. you, right? Yeah. You and your wife, like, wake up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night, like, <laughs> ah, no. I'm going to get it as home security, I think, posted by the front door. But, you know, it, it, we're just kidding around. But that's yeah. actually really, really cool, man, to have your, your face on a bottle of beer that's nationwide. I mean, that's pretty awesome, That's right? amazing. And then you're pouring it at Total Wine. Yeah, I mean, that is wow. really and cool. And watch the people do the double take as they look at the label, look at your face, look uh, at the label. I've look had at a bottle face. of beer on my face, but not <laughs> my face on a bottle of beer. <laughs> and we're not talking about yeah. any inkjet label either we're talking about sam adams yeah yeah not like my fancy homebrew label here with the uh, blue painters tape <laughs> <laughs> very cool what a, so what's it like doing those tastings that, and when people come up to you i mean for the most part they love the beer i would imagine yeah no it's been really amazing the feedback's been fantastic and uh, people just cannot believe the story that you know it was brewed in tamarack in a five gallon batch and now it's it's nationwide that's I've so cool did you have any hiccups going from one to the other Zero. No? Zero. Zero. Yeah. No, they brought, uh, they stepped it up a little bit to about a one barrel batch and brought it to GABF, and it was absolutely amazing. Wow. Jennifer, she does call, and she's the brewer for it. That's fantastic. Now, did you, uh, uh, you look like the kind of guy that just takes meticulous notes, right? And I would imagine that that's probably why you won and were able to recreate the beer uh, so well. That was the first feedback that they had for me. I sent them, they said, send us your recipe and any ideas for it. So I sent them the recipe, and they said, uh, we're good. No yeah. questions. <laughs> this guy's got chemical breakdowns, <laughs> diacetyl, you know, freaking. Sounds like you paid attention to chem lab in high school. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, <laughs> not at all. But once it came to beer, I wanted to make the best beer I could. So nice. That's Learning cool. Now. That's great. And uh, supplies, did you just buy them online, a northern brewer, that type of thing? Or you go to the local supply shop? Uh, I try and support the local shops. And Anybody you want to plug? Uh, BX Beer Depot. Okay, cool. They've Sally, fantastic. Corey, yeah. very mm -hmm. cool, very knowledgeable. Corey gives a great class up there at BX Beer Depot. Mm -hmm. He's a great guy. Fantastic. Well, we brought some – well, Russ brought some other beers, too. I'm, I'm sure that the American Stout, that is the 2014 long shot. Is it 2013 long shot or 20 – 2013, yeah. 2013, 2013 long shot for the 2014 retail. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, so the Sam Adams 2013 long shot American homebrew contest, and it creates the Sam Adams 2014 long shot variety six-pack. And there was a few winners. We could mention them as well. Um, the Please. Florida resident, Russ Bruner, American Stout, and Illinois resident, Cesar Marone, uh, the Grazer. And he said that it was pretty crisp and clean, even though it was a smoke beer? Yeah, it's a very approachable smoke beer. He's a great guy out of Chicago, and it's um, the original recipe is 100% smoked wheat. Oh, okay. So it's smoked wheat, so it gives you a little bit more. It kicks back a little bit. It's not so. It's not aggressive. It's like not. Yeah. yeah. Because wheat doesn't really roast like barley does and yeah. pick up those intense notes. Interesting. And then Teresa Burry's Pineapple IPA. We're going to try that, too. What do yep. you think of that? Another fantastic beer. And great, great lady. <laughs> you know, I've only had one Pineapple IPA made by a friend of mine who's a home brewer, and I really liked it. Um, it got a little skunky at the end. I guess you got to really... Really got to watch, but I think that just might have been what he did. But uh, I would imagine that sounds bit. like the perfect fruit to mix into an IPA, don't you think? Yeah, and I'm uh, excited to try that. Hey, Brad, too. are we going to have any beers today? 
Oh, that's Jason's Great. line. This guy's taking over your head. <laughs> What's going on? This guy moves right in. He takes right over. <laughs> Absolutely, we're going to have some beers today. So Russ brought us a plethora of wonderful craft brews that he made at home. And we're going to start with the lightest and work our way down. So if you uh, do the honor, sir, please. I will, sir. This is an 80 shilling scotch ale. Ooh. Brewed in tamarack. Interesting thing about that name was 80 shillings is what you pay for that gravity of beer. So the gravity corresponds to the alcohol level. So you pay for an 80 shilling, you'd pay for this much alcohol, a 60 shilling would be lighter, and then you'd have all the way up to a 120. Or a Scotch Ale or a Wee Heavy would be the highest and most alcoholic beers that would cost the most money. He knows his beer. Damn. This is, um, it's an 80, it's maybe a 90. Mm. It got a little bit bigger than <laughs> originally anticipated, <laughs> but I'm a... That's amazing. Uh, just wonderful complexity of malts. Beautifully clear, which is very hard to pull off in the homebrew. I'm a big proponent of that because I think you look at it first. and. What's that? Are you brewing for anyone yet? No, I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to work towards getting an actual brew pub so I can serve it. Because I've had, I'm doing the tastings, a lot of people have said, well, here, let me give you money for your homebrew. And I oh. said, oh, that's kind of called bootlegging, and I can't do that. I yeah. don't look so good in orange, though. So. This exactly. is very smooth. This is just this, this lets is me taste the hop without without slamming me like <laughs> like our favorite. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, George, the style traditionally it's interesting too because it's Scottish in nature and the Scots never wanted to buy anything from the British, never mind hops. Okay. So what they did was they made beers that were malty in structure. So the malt is pronounced, the malt is balanced. And the hops are yeah. just there to stop it from being too sweet. And that's why it's a beer that it's you really It's really in a good really spot. Good, yeah. yeah. And, I can and this guy, you, you really walked that razor's edge, my friend. Thank you very yeah. much. Because very this good. is an exceptional beer. Right off the bat, I can just tell. I mean, I've tasted so many freaking home brews and professional brews. And for the most part, I mean, I find very little that I like. Such a beer snob, Brett. I am. And this one here is just <laughs> really effing good, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> yeah, Thank you very much. Yeah, it really is. So yeah. very cool. And, you know, like I said, clarity and color and just the overall yeah, um, beyond I think a perfect nose. Yes, sir. I, I, no, I really, I just really think that's important. A lot of homebrewers say, "Well, you know, it doesn't have to be clear," but that, that's the first thing. What's the first thing you do? You hold up the light. You look yeah, sure. and see—is it pretty? And it drops all that yeast out, so it, it refines the taste of the beer a little bit. And you have a yeah, I could drink some more wonderful. Of this. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot more though. Yeah, there's a wonderful complexity to it. It Has a lot of structure. That means that the flavor profile is very pronounced, but the beer is light in nature and light on your tongue and really not heavy. What do you think, Jason? Yeah, Please. Um, well balanced, yeah. It is well balanced. Beautiful head, Good. too. Yeah, beautiful. Really nice. Yeah, I'll take a little more of that. What the heck? Perfect. But yeah, it's one of my favorite styles to brew. And this is actually uh, my first major award was at the National Homebrew Competition, which is very, very hard to place in. So it's homebrewers all over the country, very coveted prize. And I got a gold medal for the 80. Wow. So this was. This is the advancement of the recipe. I can see why. What are you doing in September? Uh, my company throws a homebrew competition. <laughs> oh, that'd be killer. <laughs> that'd be you awesome. You're on my team, team buddy. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I'm going on the trip this year. Hey, well, you know, it's funny was that oh, I'm getting a little bit of uh, scratch in, in my headphones here. Me too. Jason. Um, the funny thing was is that the, the guys that won last year had Bobby Gordash on their team. <laughs> Bobby's a great guy. I was just hanging out with him at Riverside the other night. Bobby's a great guy. He, he was the uh, 2000 and, oh no, 1996 winner, one of the first times they did the long shot contest. I bet he didn't have his picture on the label. He, he did, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. that's pretty wow. cool. I wish I would have had one of those. You know, it's funny. He yeah. probably, he's probably got one in his basement. Somewhere. He's got to have one. I'm going to see him <laughs> tomorrow, so I'll ask him for sure. Yeah, Riverside Market, fun place, huh? Yeah, no, it was great seeing Bobby. And, I mean, I, I didn't know if the place was going to explode. Two Florida long shot winners walk in at the same time. I didn't know what was going to happen, but yeah. it, was, uh, <laughs> it was a lot of and fun. And the third is Dan Oliver, winner of the 2006 long shot contest. He's the uh, the beer guy for Palm Beach Post. You ever met him? He's a nice guy. I'm familiar guy. with Dan, yeah. He's a good dude. That's cool. So I, you guys are definitely our brethren now, so they can never take that away from you. Maybe you should all get like a tattoo of all three of your faces. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> there you go. No, but these these are exceptional. I've tasted Bob Gordash's beer, and it doesn't even stand close to this. Oh! oh. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Bobby. <laughs> no, that's cool. Anyway, so um, talk to me about the malts and everything. I mean, do you just go by a very strict – do you go by a strict uh, recipe, or do you mix it up a little on your own? I, I mix it up. I try to the, – the original recipe was Jamil Zanishef to the T. It was his recipe. It was the first time I ever just followed somebody else's recipe, and it was amazing. But then, of course, you know, it only won gold at NHC, so I had to improve on it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so Jeez. I changed the malt profile a little bit. I got a little more roasted in, in the 
kind of at the end of the process so you don't get the astringency, but you get a little bit more color and just a subtle kind of chocolate at the finish there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just a big fan of the style. So, so you've been doing this for like decades or what? No, this is de year four now, I think. That's it? Yeah. I, when I jump in, I jump in both feet. And this is, I love beer. <laughs> That's well, great. I hear that. I was so a Miller Lite guy. <laughs> I had a St. Bernardus App 12, and it literally just changed my life. Well, that's great to hear. That's the kind of stuff. Those are like glory stories. They're they're amazing. And I love to hear that. Right from Miller Lite to St. Bernardus 12 is, is huge. Yeah, that's a big jump. That's a big jump. <laughs> yeah. So um, I, how'd you get started? You a, you a culinary guy? Did you cook at all? Or just thought, you know what? I'm just going to just give it a shot. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. I'm just going to go for it. Because with the App 12, you know, you get the, the dark fruits. and you get all, So I'm yeah. quizzing the bartender. It was a place called Brother Tucker's. Yeah, sure. And they just recently closed, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. He was one of the first. You know, it's always that way. The guys who are the first. Did you start with a little My Home Brewer thing? Jason. Yeah, I started out with some pretty bad beers. Yeah, I started with um, Tap that thing, Jason. extract. and. There you go. You're good. It wasn't a little kid. I found an ad on Craigslist for a carboy and a capper. Okay. So I was like, this is an easy start, and then it just... Are you sure it was for beer? <laughs> <laughs> on Craigslist, a carboy and a capper? It sounds like something Georgia put out there. <laughs> 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 Fantastic. That's cool, though. So you just you just went for it, and you, and you, and you got started. That, that's, yeah, that's and great. it's been nonstop ever since. So how, what's it like to meet Jim Cook? Amazing. Remember, Absolutely he might be listening, amazing. so... No, he, try, listen, try he deserves all the props. He is one of the most genuine... It was an amazing experience. We The first time we met was at yeah. GABF, so they announced oh. the winners. So they brought the four semifinalists down, and then he was going to announce the two winners, and he brought us up on stage, makes the announcements, and um, we had these giant pints of Boston Lager, and we're drinking them. And he's looking at my glass, and he goes, God, I still love that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, the lacing, just the way the beer leaves the layer down the glass. And I'm like, this guy is geeking out on beer after 40 years in the industry. It is it's amazing. Did you guys jump in a hot tub and sour a mash? Or? <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave that to the brew dog boys. No, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have got right in, too. I would have got right in. So, Very cool. But um, very interesting. Yes, um, we're supposedly having a call in, so we'll look at that around 6.15. Well, we better pour another beer before yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. Well, the thing is, is that, you know what? Let's jump to that IPA. If uh, you wouldn't mind, it's in the Wait. refrigerator. Well, thank you so much. Liz, correct? Liz is the uh, brewer's assistant. Yes, Russ's <laughs> and she's lovely the lovely wife. Yes. She puts up with them and all this crazy carboys sitting around the uh, living room. Yes. So I know how it is. Did you Definitely. ever brew one for her? What's that? Did you ever brew a flavor for her? Well, that's actually the stout that won the American Long Shot. Was, uh, initially, it was a jab at uh, a local homebrew, our president of our homebrew club. He makes amazing stouts. So I wanted to compete against him, and but I wanted to dial in into her flavor profile. So I brought down the astringency, and I brought down the bitterness, and I just wanted like a nice chocolate kind of bomb. She loves um, creme brulee, southern tier oh, creme brulee. perfect, yeah. So I was trying to make a big, nice velvety stout. Very cool. That's cool. Did you add in any um, uh, oatmeal? A little bit. Oh, just to get yep. some velvet? Great. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to ask you to go over your secret recipe or anything. <laughs> you guys hold them down. I'll search through his pockets. There you, you go. You can smell the <laughs> Brewers don't hide recipes, now. do they? Well, I mean, to a certain extent. I mean, you know. you know. I, I think brewers are, and you know, Russ, probably better than me. I mean, you, you guys are like, Be careful, you, you, you're like family, you know? Like yeah, brothers. absolutely. No, it's very, very open. I've been looking recently into trying to jump to the pro side. Right. And just the support and the feedback I've gotten is amazing. Yeah. So. I remember uh, Bobby Gordash told the story of how he, he traveled around like a traveling salesman. He went from brewery to brewery, and they just let him in. I'm like, they let you in with that mustache? Are you kidding me? <laughs> is they she this in. beautiful in person? She's a lovely lady. Yes, I, I've never met her, but uh, Russ can tell you, yes. Yeah, she's the, um, and I forget her exact title, but I think she's the plant manager in Pennsylvania. Very and cool. Great lady, super friendly. She won the employee homebrew winner, the yes. employee version. So that must be fun. I mean, Sam Adams is just a fun company to work for. That one could be a touch colder. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a little warm. It is a little Thanks warm, a but lot, you know George. what? You can taste all the glycerins and the, and the <laughs> you know. But, yeah, I mean, it, it oh, smells okay. a little hoppy at first, but it's balanced well. Yeah, you know, I think it's just more approachable. Again, like Caesars, it's a smoked beer, but it's a, an approachable version of it. So it's not overly bitter. It's not too fruity. Because when I was serving all the beers at the Total Wine, and people were, uh, you know, all the guys, I'm not drinking a fruit beer. Yeah. Like, guys, it's, it's okay. <laughs> right. Well, it has, you know, what's interesting about it is it has wonderful pineapple notes, but it doesn't taste too fruity. And I always think that a good fruit beer always should have really wonderful notes, a good nose, and give you those ambiance of the essence of a really lovely fruit that they're trying to uh, embrace in the beer, but 
not over uh, overpower you or inundate you once you actually drink it because you don't want it to be cloying or sweet. Or right, anything like and that. you can still taste the beer and the pineapple. So it's a. How do you do? You brew with fruits? Not much. I did a raspberry and a blueberry, and they both pretty spectacular. Pretty actually. spectacular. Yeah, I was you, a big fan. <laughs> so now, <laughs> now I'm going to be the fruit beer guy. I thought you Liz were is say back they there sucked. laughing. Did you like those? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Okay. So um, talk to me about the uh, the way that you get this. You know, obviously, you, you put it in the secondary, right? The, uh, the, the fruit. Oh, the fruit, yeah. What I did was uh, the purees. So they sell, uh, it's basically food-grade purees, so it's pasteurized. You don't have to worry about it, and you rack the beer rate on top of it, and it just kind of infuses the flavor. Do, the, do you get, uh, like, a ratio of fruit to, to wort um, or, you know? Uh, it, I forget the can. So it's, like, 48 ounces to 5 gallons, somewhere in that range. So they give you a pretty good ratio, though. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about it. No. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. That's what I always worried about, getting it, you know, just. I would never follow instructions. Oh, I right. do that to cut you off, Jason. Jason got cut off because we have a caller calling in. Now, we're not sure, but we'll find out as soon as they open their mouth whether it's Grant McCracken or Jennifer Glanville. And uh, Jennifer's the director of brewery programs, and then Grant's the head brewer. But either one, welcome to Buy the Glass Show. Uh, Jennifer. It is Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer, I heard you're at a Brewers game. I am. I'm standing outside of my favorite bar. Calling down to you guys, where I'm sure it's a little warmer than it is here. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's uh, you know, like 80, uh, 89 and sunny. But uh, uh, so jealous. Thank you so much for taking your time to call in. That's that's really awesome. We are sitting uh, here. Anytime I can talk about beer is uh, <laughs> I'm, I want to. Fantastic. Thank With you. a home brewer talking to at a, from a brewer's game. Yeah, that's it's that's really cool. cool. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. it's definitely. So Jennifer, we have we have Russ sitting here, and uh, we're talking about the uh, the homebrew contest and. Uh, it's really amazing that you guys put this on, Sam Adams, the long shot, and give the average man a, a chance to really shine in the spotlight. And Russ has really shined through with this amazing American stout that he's made. How do you feel about that? Yeah, well, first of all, Russ, how you doing? It's uh, great to talk to you. And um, I, I love this this uh, promotion that we do, this program. To me, I mean, I'm, I'm a brewer um, by training, and... I've worked for for Jim for 13 years, and the passion and innovation I have seen over the years in this contest is amazing to me. And I know, you know, Russ is a great example of that. And we we love to see people just really encouraged to homebrew. I mean, we know there's so many great craft beers out there, but being creative and, and making the beer yourself is just really really cool. And it's one of my favorite uh, things that I work on. I love meeting the home brewers, and it was a pleasure to hang out with Russ when we were out at the Great American Beer Festival. And I think the Long Shot program just really showcases the creativity that people have in brewing, whether you're a home brewer brewing in your kitchen or, you know, somebody who might have a little larger setup. Yeah, fantastic. So when I asked him the first thing, I said, you know, you must take meticulous notes, and he said that, that was one of the things that helped him win. When you met him and you saw him brew, did you know that it was in his blood? <laughs> I could tell because when we first met and we were talking about his beers, because I, I know the winners, but I can't disclose, obviously, until we get to the JBF. Um, and when I talked to them and we collaborated on the recipes and, and just, you know, we had a lot of email back and forth. And you can just tell their passion. And I was actually dying to tell this guy that he won <laughs> because he was so into it and he was so collaborative and, you know, just, you know, everything about it and so when we met after he was announced you know the first thing we started talking about was how we're going to brew his beer in boston so um to me that excitement i mean it never gets old for me as a brewer and to be able to talk to someone who does this for a passion you know just in his home and and russ as you can attest to that significant other spouses family members yes they are really gracious to share the home with a home brewer oh absolutely <laughs> our second bedroom is now a brewery and uh, you know, my <laughs> wife loses me at least one day a weekend and but Jennifer, no, I want to say thank you very much because that, that batch that you brewed for the GABF was just amazing. And it's 1030 in the morning, and I, I couldn't <laughs> stop drinking. <laughs> I couldn't either, to be honest. It was it's so, so good. good. <laughs> That's fantastic. So he, he chose the American Stout. How did you think that that really played into the overall decision, uh, the beer style that he chose? You know, I, I, overall what we're looking for when we're judging and, and what Jim really wants is we, we want – a clean beer. So we want a beer that, you know, doesn't have any defects or off flavors. We do look for innovation and creativity, but on the same note, we're looking for people who can really master the, some classic styles. And the American style, I mean, I remember when they were tasting it, I just, 
I was tasting it, and I'm thinking, this is phenomenal. Like, nobody really kind of goes back to the basics. I'm a big fan of sort of historical recipes and traditional recipes. And it was just clean. And the roasted notes, the cocoa notes, all of those flavors that come through that you expect with a traditional sprout, um, they were there. It was balanced. And, I mean, to me, I, if you that could be brewed on, on any scale. It was such a high-quality beer that he had brewed at home. So we were – I was really excited when it made it sort of to the finals – and then when it was selected as, as one of the winners, um, you know, t- it's, it's great. And I think it adds a lot to the, to the beer package that we have. And we have a pineapple IPA, which one of our brewery employees brewed. And then we have um, the Gracer. Which, so it's a nice package, um, and it showcases three completely different style of beers. And I thought the American Stout just added a nice, different, and, and darker beer, which, um, you know, people really are, are getting back into. Yeah, it's wonderful. I can't wait to try it. We tried some of his other home brews, just with one uh, so far, and it was absolutely clean and perfect and amazing too. So obviously, the guy's uh, he, he's uh, follows through with his artistry. So, but uh, the fact of the matter is, the home brewer really is the essence of the American craft brew movement. And Jim Cook, he's the one who has his pinnacle right on that with the long shot brewing contest. Uh, where do you see the contest going in the future and to the next level? I see it continuing to grow. I mean, we still have our regional finals, and we send all the beers to Boston for the final judging. And, you know, every year we see hundreds and hundreds of more people submitting. And so I encourage any homebrewers out there, the window is still open. Check our website for the final date. It's coming up towards the end of May. And I I think, you know, what we really want out of this is to encourage people to be creative. I mean, we can talk about pairing beers and and food together with with our beers, Um, but on top of that, we want to encourage people to use ingredients that they have in their house and just experiment because beer should be fun, and we should be having fun with it. Absolutely. Beer is fun, and beer is good for you. <laughs> I think I heard that, heard that song somewhere. <laughs> so when are we going to get you down to South Florida to go to a Marlins game? Are you a Bruins fan or just uh, you just happen to be out there? I, I'm a Bruins fan. I, I'm a Red Sox fan, but I would love to come down to, to a Marlins game, so hopefully soon I'll be down there. Great. Okay, hopefully we'll see you soon. Jennifer Gratzer. She is the head of brewing production, I'm um, sorry, programs at the uh, Samuel Adams Brewery. Thank you so much for calling in to buy the glass show and uh, have fun at your baseball game. Bruins game, hockey. Bruins, We're I'm sorry. In. Bruins oh. game. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, my sorry, bad. Sorry, guys. I know that might hurt a little. <laughs> um, Russ, uh, Russ, take care, and um, you guys keep, keep drinking and making good beer down there. Will do. Take care. <laughs> Thank okay. you so much. Bye-bye. Well, that was awesome. She was very cool. Um, Great lady. Boy, did I screw that up, huh? And that Brewers joke could really suck then, right? I, I thought <laughs> I thought they were the Milwaukee Brewers, right? As but she's, she's at a hockey Boston game. Bruins. Bruins. Okay, yeah. so I'm not a sports fan, guys. I apologize. But, uh, I am. I'd love to have her better. come down. That's why I said come down to South Florida and hit a Marlins game. Okay. It's a, it's a beer show, not a sports show. Let's right. move on yeah, to yeah, next year. As long as you're beer. a beer fan. Let's move on to the next beer. <laughs> okay, All so right. perfect. Anyway, so. What a great idea. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe we should take a quick break. Oops. We'll do that. We'll regroup ourselves. And when we get we'll back, we will uh, try some more of this wonderful beer. What do you got coming up next? Chocolate Bourbon Mild. So it's a wow. mild Way style bad. beer with uh, bourbon. Well worth waiting for. <laughs> Fantastic. When we come back on By the Glass Show, we're going to have a Chocolate Bourbon Mild. We're going to uh, talk to Russ Bruner, the winner of the 2013 Long Shot Contest. And it's for Sam Adams. And we're going to enjoy all that and uh, much more wonderful stuff when we come back on By the Glass Show on SoFloRadio.com. SoFloRadio.com. Filling the radio void. Put a team of professional consultants behind your home or business computer with key information solutions. Providing solutions to your internet and computing needs while keeping you on the cutting edge of technology. Preventative maintenance and networking support. Hardware and custom built computers. Let key information solutions be your personal tech staff for your home or office with affordable hourly, monthly, or annual rates to fit anyone's budget. Call key information solutions now. 954 970 That's 954-973-3374. Or visit keyinformation.com. When you're ready to actually lose weight safely and steadily while being monitored by a physician, the weight loss clinic of Dr. Kim Jacobson is there for you. The family medicine practice was established by her father in 1956 and continues as a medical practice that now specializes in weight reduction. Dr. Kim Jacobson joined the practice 20 years ago as both a family medicine practitioner and weight loss specialist. The weight loss clinic utilizes a combination of appetite suppression medication and vitamins to produce great results, usually three to four pounds per week for most patients. Now you can change your lifestyle while still 
still enjoying your own food, just less of it. They offer a choice of two, three, or four week plans. So whether you just need to lose a few pounds or a lot, the weight loss clinic of Dr. Kim Jacobson can help you. They're located at 5454 Northeast 4th Avenue in Miami, just two blocks west of 54th Street and Biscayne Boulevard. Call them at 305-751-0091. They'll be happy to answer any and all of your questions. That's 305-751-0091. Get started on a beautiful new body today with Dr. Kim Jacobson and the Weight Loss Clinic. Strawberry patch and smoothie. Come Get your hands off me. Huh? I said don't touch me. I shouldn't went to that party last night. Now I'm seeing talking fruit. You're not dreaming bub of it. And you're not putting me in that blender to do it. But you're just a fruit. <laughs> Who you calling a fruit? You are. You're, you're a delicious passion fruit. Why, sure, I'm passionate. How would you like to be blended, huh? I got right, you know. Customers waiting. You gotta go. Yeah, but wait, you can poop. <laughs> At Power Smoothie in Aventura, we show fruit no mercy. Always fresh, always delicious. To make the best smoothies and wraps on earth, try our new cilantro lime delicious wrap or our hot chipotle chicken. Bower Smoothie in Aventura, located just north of the Aventura Mall in the Promenade Shops. Or call 305-792-5338. Open seven days a week. The most important online See? radio station See? It's in easier than world. ever to listen to SoFlo. On the air and everywhere. On any computer, any mobile device, iPhone, iTouch, and anywhere you are, just hit SoFloRadio.com. Tell your friends about South Florida's radio network, SoFloRadio.com. And now we return you to By the Glass. Boston Bruin. Before he was married. The Bruins game. <laughs> it could have been you. <laughs> Are you going to do that scream when they go, ah! <laughs> Oh, that made red lights go no, off. I, I, I picked this song because he's a long shot, man. <laughs> Very cool. I'd like to, I got to apologize to Jennifer Glanville for screwing her name up. And then she's at the Boston Bruins hockey game. Yeah, I am not the sports guy. Sorry. I'm the uh, beer guy, in case anybody didn't notice. Yeah, I'm not. This is By the Glass Show, and you can catch us on bytheglassshow.com, soflowradio.com, listen live Thursdays at 6 o'clock, or go to my website where I got over 300 shows, and we talk about wine, beer, spirits, and everything in between. It is absolutely amazing, the people that I've interviewed, including Mr. Russ Bruner, the Sam Adams 23 long shot yeah. winner, man. Very cool, very, very cool. Amazing. So. Welcome back, and uh, you know I'm extremely excited because these beers are amazing. The one I just tried so far, it uh, really rocked my socks off there, and uh, I think that uh, the next one's going to be just as good. Why don't you talk to us about this mild? Yeah, they didn't win for nothing. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> well, this, again, another favorite style. I like the lower alcohol so I can mm. put down a whole bunch of beers. Sessionable, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So this was an English mild. Um, it's been doing pretty well on the home brewing circuit, picking up a couple medals here and there. Um, really? It just won silver at the Masters of Home Brewing competition. Um, and I wasn't that happy with it, so I took the rest of the keg and I infused Perfect. it with toasted cocoa nibs uh. and some Jack Daniel. Uh, so you can do that if something doesn't turn out quite right. You just absolutely re-experiment. Yep. And I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. Oh, man. Go ahead. I'm just saying, how do you keep it so precise? Because I know even big brewers, and there's a lot of breweries locally that they don't even produce the same beer, the same tasting, you know, and they're working with a computerized system and a, you know, it's amazing. I have a follow-up question, too. Please. But how do you how do you keep it so consistent? Well, the, the key is just track your ingredients, mm. and you have to keep an eye on, on every single point of the process. So you it's have amazing. the water, you have the yeast, you have the temperature for you're fermenting at. You have all those variables mm. make the beer. So if you keep an eye on every single thing and just try and develop those flavors and get it consistent, then you have a base beer that you can add whatever to. So it brings out that, you know, you have a killer base, and then you can put whatever you want into it. Do you taste it during the process? I do. 
but I, I got to say, I'm, I'm pretty blind during the process. I'll taste it out of the fermenter, and I cannot tell what it's going to be. So until I keg it and carbonate it, then I know if it's a hit or a miss. Uh, some of the variables would probably be yeast propagation, and I would imagine that you've probably thrown a, a batch or two away because the yeast didn't fire correctly or temperature or whatnot, right? No, because yeah. I treat them. They are the rock stars of the house. Are the they? Yeast, okay. Yeah, every single time. It's, uh, so it's you got to I mean, keep your yeast healthy. and, and keep you know, it. That's Don't put you your failings on him. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right, Jason. <laughs> Damn yeah, that yeast. The, the brewer, the only thing he's doing is making wort. So he right. is making the environment for the yeast. So if the yeast are not happy, if there's not enough, if you don't give them the right anything, they, they can take a bad turn. So you make them as happy as you can. Do you can. have like a, a stir plate and a propagator? I, I have a all? stir plate oh, propagator. This guy. That's awesome, man. That's Yeah, you deserve it, man. These are amazing beers. Uh, mild is one of those interesting uh, styles that's just really underrated. You know, in England, once again, they didn't yeah. use a lot of hops. Now this one, Good. the mild had to do really with taxation, you know, and you wanted they wanted to keep their beers very low on alcohol, so they didn't have to pay tax on the gravity, and uh, that was after the war. That was something that came about, and they kept their beers very, very mild. What is a stir plate for people who don't know? A stir plate is a little yeah, plate that you would find in a chemistry lab that mm -hmm. uh, it Russ can tell you all about it. If you come over, you'll think I'm breaking bad. You'll think yeah. I'm making meth in there, but it's... Uh, <laughs> but you're really growing yeast. <laughs> exactly. Don't yeah, put you're it in the your Boy, car. everybody no, uses that all. excuse. <laughs> and don't have a cable service call when you're brewing because we had a guy from Comcast come in and went, Oh, no, man. And he started walking out and calling the cops. I said, but, no, it's beer. Come here. Let me show you. Let me pour you some. It's okay. Wow. <laughs> but it does kind of look a little like And that's when you hit him in the back of the head and tied him up in the back yeah. room. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the sir plate will keep the yeast in suspension. So, basically, you have a, a vial on top of it with the liquid and the yeast in it, and it, it just spins the yeast constantly. So, they're in suspension. They eat all the sugar. They're active. They're ready to run. Yeah, just Google it, and, uh, yeah, you'll, yeah be that on, too. you'll be on the list. That also. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, Talk to me. Nope. Uh, talk nice. to me about uh, sours. You ever made any sours? I have not. I, I'm not a huge sour fan, but like a nice Berliner Weiss where it's subtle, I, I can do. So I've been thinking about going that route because it seems that it's a great Florida beer. You know, the Florida so Cigar Water City and and uh, mm -hmm. Jonathan Wakefield, yep. the, the Funky Buddha Boys, they all make some. Well, Rap. This is another one. Um, oh, Rap Brewing. Yeah, Rap yeah. Brewing. He does a Goza. So you know, th all these you're going to notice every single growler is from a different brewery in florida and that's very cool not by accident i mean that's just research so you want to see what's out yeah. there and taste as much as you can you know what the cicerone exam that yeah 64s <laughs> i can't <laughs> talk about that right now <laughs> well, thank goodness the house uh, d uh didn't pass that bill right no it passed again I think well it went no again no the senate passed it but the house it's dead in the house oh is it yeah Okay. I hope it died. Yeah, but yeah, I, th I think it hit the house and it was. I was. I, I, I don't know. They did have a couple of good things in the bill, but uh, the majority of the bill sucked. Yeah, it was rougher. Again, somebody like me that would try to open a small place, it would be very, very tough. It certainly would be. But yeah, uh, one other thing, uh, the the spent grain, they're not going to be able to allow to feed that to animals anymore, right? That got killed. That got yeah. killed. Okay. Yeah. You know, it's interesting if you go to a brewery that. If you go to a brewery that has, you know, a lot of spent grain built up, it tends to create methane gas. It is absolutely and disgusting. it smells like horse donkey. Yeah, can't they give it to animals and stuff? Or well, if it's fresh. Yeah. If well, they if pull it away before it rots, as it rots and breaks down, it creates methane gas. Yeah, and the it grain. smells like... And then it, it becomes a problem landfill. for them. Then it smells like manure. It. they got to dump it, right? It's well, it's dumped landfill. in the back of the thing, and they're waiting for, for farmers to come and pick it up and bring it out to the fields and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So... They don't want to allow that because guess what? Guess what industry doesn't get to pay taxes on feed anymore? You know, they're losing money. Cattle. The cattle, you know, the feed farmers, the people that actually well, feed the cattle. because there's no tax on it because it's going right from the brewer to the yeah, farmer. So. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, so nobody's paying for anything. They're giving it to them for free. Yeah, just come pick it up. And there's no taxes. So there's a lot of people losing a lot of money in a lot of ways, and, and that's kind of where everything kind of gets into the – but this is not a political show, Jason, <laughs> all right? So get your, you know – Right, right, George. No, it is. It is. We're pro alcohol. <laughs> pro alcohol. <laughs> really no sports and no policy. politics, yeah. man. That's a so flow way. But right. back to the spent grain for new home brewers. Make sure you throw that stuff out right away, or get rid of it. Give it, it to a farm. A it can problems, right? stink. Like you're saying. Liz is back there shaking her head. You thought that was just him, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, methane buildup, maybe. 
<laughs> my wife will tell you. I got methane buildup <laughs> <laughs> all over my house. <laughs> but uh, very, yeah, that's an interesting thing. I didn't really think about it until I experienced it first. Yeah, because yeah, lactobacillus naturally lives on the grain. So yes. it starts to break down. That's what makes sour beers, and they make some very disgusting off right. flavors and One scents. interesting <laughs> thing you can do, and I've often suggested that somebody go and just open up a pizzeria right next to a brewery, uh, next to like Funky Buddha Hint Hint mm. or Saltwater Hint Hint, and uh, use the spent grain and make pizza crust out of it, which you can do. Just make it into a flour and make pizza crust out of it. And then you're, you know, you're affiliated with the brewery, and everybody at a brewery wants to have a slice of pizza at some yeah, point. especially if it's made with a spent grain. Especially mm-hmm. if you open the pizza place right next to the brewery and let the smell waft through. And well, maybe like the brewery should just open the, the restaurant. Hint, 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 hint. Yeah. Well, I, and I, no one seems to have done it so far. But Hello? the brewery is too busy worried about being a brewery, which they should be worried about. Right. Someone else should capitalize yeah, on yeah. it. Yeah, you know? too many hats. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I think it's all very interesting. So back to the beer. We have some uh, canned questions here. And, sure. Uh, how long, so we talked about how long you've been a home brewer. Mm-hmm. And we talked about your American Stout. So some of the most rewarding challenges and aspects of creating your own recipe. Um, I, I'll be honest with you. There, it's not a challenge to me. To me, mm. it's an exciting thing. So I it's see. the potential of putting these things all together, and they're going to taste fantastic. Right. Or not so much. I've been lucky enough where, you know, I've had a few batches that just really didn't, stylistically, it didn't work. But, again, if, as long as you keep your yeast healthy, you're going to have a happy beer. I just find it amazing you can do something that's very creative and, and simple in, 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 in its essence because it's the most – really cultivated and wonderful beverage that's ever been created and you can bring that to the forefront and just use it to you know, it brings a lot of joy to people's lives you know mm-hmm. look at george without beer would just be horrible hey it's hey brett you think we could try that beer. uh that what that am i the beer that, police around here do you think we could try that stout that like uh actually won it's and that won the we could get to it but he's got some more other great beers that i really want to try well, stout is let's like do it then let's you do know it. what i mean place. jeez let's do it. Boy, a lot of beer. i'm on a timer over here <laughs> what else you got for us well actually yeah let's go to the porter Oh yes, she's on it. Thank you, Liz. You're hired. Does this have a, does this have a really cool name? <sighs> no, I'm terrible at the names. Yeah, it's uh, named Porter. <laughs> <laughs> it's called the By the Glass Show Porter. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> it has a good name, just like American Style. Yes. Yeah. Just as <laughs> some of the na- some of the names are getting ridiculous. I'll have to be honest. Yeah. We won't yeah. mention any. No. Don't mention any because mm. you might offend somebody. And, and, we don't might, offend and they're, they're going to be on the show next week probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 I can just tell this beer just looks exceptional right from the start. So right on. George is going to like it. These beers are great. It's the right color. <laughs> <laughs> it's got great foam too. How do you get such good carbonation? The yeast? It was my poor. Uh, no, well, that's the, the head retention. So that's there's a lot of things that go into that. So the carbonation, it's the proteins from the beer. Um, but, yeah, this is – Do you have to add carbonation or no? Yes. Yeah, so I have a 10-pound tank, and you just connect it right to the keg, and you can – if you're in a hurry, you can get it done in a day. If you want to wait it out, so you can do it in about three what's your days. average fermentation time um, I can without, have it, without forced carbonation? If it's not a big beer, like the beer I'm saving for last is a Belgian Strong Dark, 11.2%. It's ridiculous. But something like that will take forever. But a, a good average ale like this, you can knock out in 10 to 14 days probably. So 10 to 14 days, then you don't have to secondary in a bottle. You just put it in your corning and, and, and forced yep. carb. No one's Very hired sweet. you yet at any of these breweries. <laughs> I mean. It's because he wants to be his own entity. Yeah. Man. You know what I mean? He you ever look into like to move a, to although you're an excellent <laughs> brewer and probably better than most guys at Siemens? You ever look at that? You ever t- think about that? Like just to, to you ever hear of Siemens? In no. Chicago? Oh, uh-huh. Siemens Brewing Institute in Chicago. Oh, Siebel. Siebel. Okay. Yes, 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 yeah. No, well, we I'm actually. Just, I'm just messed up. No, today. no, no. <laughs> we had a. I'm uh, going home. <laughs> Siebel. Is yeah, it's right by it's right by the Brewers Hockey Club. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Jennifer Gratzer's there right now. Siebel oh, is uh, it's fantastic. We had a guy locally. Um, Phil Gillis, he works at Funky Buddha now, but he was one of our homebrew guys. Yeah, he went Phil, to Siebel yeah. and then uh, went overseas, came back, and just started working with Buddha. So I would love to do it. I just – Yeah, no, I'm just saying It's a monetary time. What's that beer farm thing up in, like, Orlando or something? No. Oh, the brew hub? Yeah, brew – yeah. Would you brew, brew up there or is that when you get st- – Well, uh, their contract, contract – yeah. yeah, contract brewing is a little bit tricky. You need to get a little bit bigger before you do that? Or yes. Yeah. All right, so right off the bat, I mean, these chocolate malts scream, okay? And the beauty of a really good porter is that you, first of all, it, it cascaded as you poured it, which means it's just the propagation of yeast and the overall CO2 protein to, to, uh, to uh, carbo uh, is just amazing. So that right there, and then it's a really thick foamy head with a lot of like a bun- gumball-like uh, 
head on top. It's not just like creamy. It's like, it's like got crevices and all kinds of stuff. So that means his yeast, like he said, is just out of control. Really small, little tiny creamy bubbles. Just exceptional. Then you put it up to your nose. Those cocoa nibs just scream. And then the chocolate malts come out. There's just enough acidity in there to keep it really light and lively. But then it just falls away perfectly with nice herbal hops that just balance it out to give you structure. And they just make the beer overall just a really total package that's what i was trying to say <laughs> what he said Definitely. yeah the, the recipe itself is basically the the base mile that you guys had but it's just uh it's like it's big brother yeah so i stepped up the malt bill and some of the roasted grain and i mean you just you know with ratios mathematician you know chemistry and whatnot keeping it all within the in you know in the margins and you can just you know you can make just sunshine in a bottle absolutely yeah it's all about the proportions it's so similar to baking i'm not a baker but again if you don't have your flour to sugar ratio correct then it's not going to be right so you never pretty, measure right no, i i, I am so like not about the details and yeah. anything in my life i'm like yeah, kind of guy like yeah let's do this i'm like doing 26 things you know like big big boom i but took I your just, bottle of your homebrew home man it was yeah. good. It wasn't too bad, but it was, you know, this stuff is just. You, bre- you brewed some more and didn't get some? I've brewed some more, yes. I, I'm brewing all no, the time. No, just at the competition. What'd you brew? I've brewed a few, uh, many different things. I tend you to always a couple use. Are really good. I'll, yeah. I'll do like a Belgian pale ale, or I always use a, a good, like a Ardini's yeast. Nice. That's always my go to yeast. And I'll use like, uh, you know, pale malts, throw maybe some caramel malts in there. And then I, I usually do like a 15 minute boil, get big, big, you know, uh, nose. Uh, with some Cascade and Citra, but then I'll like always like you know at, at thirty, uh, I'll throw in just like you know some herbal hops like an East Can or a Golden, just you know to give it a structure and then a big nose. So that's generally what I try to do, and I'll try to dial that in. You know, it's kind of like my favorite beer to, to drink. But I'm going to be making a uh, sessionable red IPA just because we might be going up to Harpoon and doing some brewing with them. They're going to have us up for a day, so that's the I, I submitted it to the uh, brewmaster. Then I'm going. I want to make a. Sessionable red, and what I submitted to him, I just, you know, mostly two-row pale, just a dash of black patent, right. you know, and then I was even going to throw a little bit of uh, Vienna or Carmel in there just for shits and giggles. I don't know why. I just thought maybe it would give it a little bit of an essence. But Big hop, a hop profile? or Yeah, I was just going to go with, I was going to do Amarillo, Citra, and oh. Nelson Sauvin. Well, in, hold on. We'll transition right into that. Can I get the... Perfect. We got a beer coming that you'll love. <laughs> okay, perfect. Yeah, hey, George, just, maybe they could open a brewery what you, here. What were you thinking yeah, about? You know, just, was a great place for just a blast at the last. <laughs> I was thinking that's, of just doing just a blast. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's how I do it. I'll do like a first wort hop, uh-huh. um, skip the sixty, mm-hmm. and then just do a whole bunch of late additions. Great. I like. I don't like the straight bitter where it coats Me your too. tongue and you can't drink it. Yeah. So you'll you should love this. So far, your beers are just exquisite, man, and uh, I swear to God, these are some of the best beers I've, I've had. <laughs> what do you guys yeah, think? Absolutely. I mean, we try I mean, a lot I, of beer, I man. I can't believe he's not, uh, you know. Well, he is, chops. but I'm working on it. There's so a difference between, like, being able to brew great beer and, like, getting into a situation where you have a brewery right, or facilities yeah, or stainless contracts. Stainless steel is very expensive. expensive That's why I yeah. own a lot of stock in stainless steel. I know. We talked about <laughs> that before. <laughs> My new yeah. best friend. Well, you, you have to because there's everybody's yeah, opening it. Yeah, you're right. I saw every, look, it says it right here. Okay, so America's interest in home brewing and craft beer is at an all-time high. So according to 400 new breweries opened in 2013, that equates to more than one brewery opening each day. Mm-hmm. What do they all need? They all need stainless, stainless steel. steel. Lots so, and lots of stainless. And He's got you know. some good stock tips, too. Yeah, man. Well, you know, we're not a political show or a sports show, but we might be a little financial in there. <laughs> wow, I'm getting hops right away off. Nah, this is, I'm excited about this. Yeah, so this guy, this is um, the kind of brew. That's, a, that's like Sierra Nevada. The clarity, hops. though. Look at all that two-row pale, right? Just straight up? No, or, this no? is actually a blend of Pilsner and pale. Okay, so Pilsner. So, yeah, you'll get a little bit more malt that way. Right. But it's lovely because it's, I think, what is that, like a 7, 8 SRM? That's mm-hmm. Cascade Hops right. Ed Roberts. <laughs> That's got a this tangy is smell. <laughs> Ooh, the smell of this makes my mouth water already. It's 100% uh, citra and amarillo. Oh, those Darn are some it. of my favorite on the sorry. nose. Some of my favorite on the that nose. That was going to be my next guess. Ed. You get those really tropical fruits, right? Like pink grapefruit mixed with like a little bit of mango, some passion fruit. Oh, mango. Right? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, it's in there, isn't sure. it? It's exceptional. Just so crisp and clean. Oh, Ed, you wish you were here. <laughs> Actually, Ed, had, Ed has a bottle, so. Has he tried all of these? <laughs> no, he hasn't. I gave him a bottle of the IPA. I don't know if he's tried it yet. Unbelievable. Uh, this is my favorite so far. Well, this is my this is my style. That's your style, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm not the hugest IPA fan, but it is drinkable. But it's not uh, that bitter, though. You know what's That's what I mean. This is exactly. Bitter, no. it's right. Not bitter. This is awesome. It doesn't finish like some Dude, of my Dude, there is so much ruby yeah. red grapefruit in this. It's ridiculous. <laughs> right? 
This is unbelievable. This is a phenomenal beer. This is exactly the kind of beer I want to make. Uh, you were, you were I made a red IPA. We'll work yeah. on it together. Oh, very cool. Yeah, for the uh, contest. Now. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, you're going to open a brewery here. George said you could. George? <laughs> yeah, right here. <laughs> George, we, we, call call right we were going to make a still in the backyard. Right next to the meth lab. I mean, it's <laughs> excellent. excellent. Move things over, it'll fit right in. He's not joking. <laughs> No, but if you are thinking of a location, West Broward, we need a brew pub out there. Get out of West Broward. It's boring out there. It's hot. It's a swamp. Well, we Come back here to Hollywood. Open. We party all the time. It's right. The beach. It's got the beach. Coconut Creek is a good location. Yeah. <laughs> it's a horrible place. All right. Well, whatever you do, you just got to. I know a couple of guys that are, that are home brewers, mm-hmm. and they're just, you know, they're finding a hell of a time trying to get, like, a facility to brew at because everybody's at capacity. Yeah. And it's just it's just not easy, and uh, I'm sure you'll find investors. If I had money, I would definitely I, I, would, I would back you because you your beers are just exceptional, man. There's, just no, two, there's no two Thank ways you. about it. I mean, I taste a lot of. That's pro. You know, Thank I can't you. really say anything bad about anybody because this is a radio show. Let's but, not do that. You know, I taste I'll a lot that. of beer. I, yeah. I taste mm-hmm. a lot of beer that's mm-hmm. subpar. I really do out there, and from all over. You know, even from professionals that I just personally don't like, and I chalk it up to my not my preference. But there's no denying beers that are made perfectly whether you like an ipa or you like a mild or you like a porter these beers are That's beyond drinkable bro they're structurally sound in every way sense and form you know and then he adds his little extra you know this and that to it to make it you know his own no you're i have not tried to say you know like stone and joy by i would much rather drink this all day long oh don't drink that all day long that's seven and a half percent you're kidding me (laughs) i swear to god (laughs) (laughs) i would never in a million years think this is seven and a half percent do you guys think that georgie no no no. it doesn't taste like that at all i thought that it feels a little like it but it doesn't taste like it exceptional it's (laughs) because it's all the hops you want the flavor without any of that bitterness Mm -hmm. man i get just enough to balance it doesn't leave that bitterness on your tongue and that's what i can't stand because I don't want to always go back for another sip. Once I, it's satiated, that's that's all you're tasting. But that's this, you get the little bit of malt in the middle, and yeah, that's a uh, very it's good just, point. It's, it's a perfect amount of hops for me. What do you think the IBU on that is overall? That's an excellent question. It's I don't probably know. it tastes to me 60, like it's ranging in sixty. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's ranging 60. sixty to seventy. So we got the SRM at about an eight, and sixty <laughs> IBU, yeah. and the overall alcohol at about seven point two. You know, the by the glass audience knows what that means. <laughs> they know Fantastic. what it means. My beer we need people. to get Dearborn to make him up some good names for his beers. Don't give Queerborn a plug. So <laughs> <laughs> he should have brought a one twenty eight of this one. I think. <laughs> what is it with you? You, you just got to stir the pot, don't you? Huh? Yeah, that's yeah. my job. What do you got a big shirt that says no on one eighty whatever? <laughs> no, I love, I, per, personally, this this is like whatever. What? No, the the size. Oh, the size. And sixty fours are probably good, but one twenty eight is more my style. That's cool. One twenty eight. You know, that's a cool T shirt. One twenty eight is more my style. I roll on one twenty eight. <laughs> I roll on one twenty eight. And they're legal. <laughs> they are. Right. So the gallon. I always thought that you bring this to a party for the night, and then the gallon you bring home, you can just pour off it for a while, right? Yeah. The yeah. gallon's a big boy. We got one uh, Green Room Brewing out in Jacksonville. Yes, Green Room. We got room. their barley yes. wine, and that was that was a long night. And that's a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one gallon and that's, a, that. that's a perfect beer to keep for the evening, right? Definitely. Yeah. All right, so we're, we're winding down here to the last 10 minutes, and I, I guess we can bust out the stout, I right? Think it's in the, I think it's in the freezer. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, <laughs> boy. How many – how uh, – how, uh, Oh, we have this as well. That's okay, perfect. So we can get into that one before. I think it's in there, yeah. What, what's the alcohol in the stout? Seven point two. So, so we're gonna end up. strong, yeah. But don't pop it yet. So let's just let it sit. There's two in there. Thank you. Yeah, yeah that's not too cold. That's sit. perfect. It's gotta sit though. It's definitely oh, gotta let me sit. See it for a second. Yeah, don't pop it. <laughs> I love that picture, right. man. That's let it great. sit. Who wants to take a picture of this and put it up on the Facebook account? Oh, well, no, not Facebook. Take a picture with the, the, next the creepy <laughs> guy next to the creepy guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, take a picture with hey, that. No, <laughs> That's hey, awesome. And nobody's ever done this picture before. No, this, <laughs> no, this is unique. <laughs> this is unique. <laughs> Fantastic. Guys, you're listening to By the Glass Show. We're a show about beverage yeah, culture. Yeah. Come to you every Thursday at 6 on SoFlow Radio and ByTheGlassShow.com. Go check out my website. I have over 300 shows with everybody you can think of. Wine, beer, spirits, and more. That's right. It's Absolutely. a high-end show. Do you so, get a cut of the sales? It was a grand prize. Oh, okay. Yeah, grand prize, and it's none of your business. <laughs> Dude, so what is Sam the, what Adams, long shot winner. Uh, $5,000 plus uh, trip to the GABF, plus the trip to Boston. So I think I entered total. I sent them maybe 10 bottles of beer. So I think I got the uh, Did they make you nice come to Boston nice in, like, February? <laughs> no, we were just up there about three weeks ago. Oh, that's a, nice. So yeah. 
I was literally at the American Craft Beer Festival in, in Boston in June 1st last year. It, it was snowing almost. Yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculously cold. Don't tell me it wasn't cold in Boston when yeah, you were there. It, it was, was cold, cold, right? Yeah, it's just amazing. That place stays cold forever. Did you go past the Boston Marathon finish line? Just to lay down some flowers as a memorial, Jason. No, just to walk by it, I would. <laughs> Jeez. Very cool. So, anyway, what do we got? We got oh, this is a uh, Belgian Strong Dark. This mm. should age for another eight months or so, but we'll see how it's very along. cool. Very cool. So this is yeah, this is the kind of beer that actually just you know you want it to you can age it for quite some time yeah. and it just gets better overall. Oh. So it's eleven so point. Go ahead. Oh. Uh, something you have aging, and we're just yeah. doing a sample of it. Yes. yes. No, yeah, I want to see how it's beautiful. coming along. This so it's eleven point two percent alcohol. Jason, you remember how he, you asked him if he tastes? His I love being involved in this. Uh, this is in this stage here. Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah, this like, is the R&D. This is like watching a band. This is like watching a band, you know, sort their sound out. Yeah, this it. is very cool, man. This is so wow. It, you'll notice it's not a big punch in the face with the Belgian esters from the But yeast. it's still complex. It's it's got enough. Yeah, cuz no, I don't I don't like the bomb, so I ferment colder just to kind of restrain it so you get that's more. That's got something going on. Let's see how much these guys have learned from the show. So he ferments mm. colder, what does that mean? Takes what is that going to reduce? I'm not sure. <laughs> esters. Right? Yeah. Low that's fermentation pretty, temperatures. I yeah. really need more clean, pretty. pure malt. Right? Come on, guys. That, no, I'm sorry. I failed. missed that lesson. They failed me. Failed They're paying attention to every other week. I'm happy. But home. you know what's interesting <laughs> about this is 11.2. This will get you all the way. The, the, yeah. I was going to say, this has got a little nip on it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Going you know to what the I field get after this. Yeah, it's Dude. like a schnapps, basically. You figure it's uh, 22 proof. Okay. Just so many wonderful dried wow. fruits, right? Fig, right? Figgy pudding. Right, a lot I of got, diarrhea. I got in fig, there. maybe some pruning. Prunes, pruning right? All those really not, like almost chocolatey. Mm. Definitely a lot of caramel notes. And again, those are all kind of round out and probably yeah. get a little better with time. Yeah, so. no, and this is beautiful, man. Unbelievable. Now to pull it's off like beers a lighter like this. Utopius, you know, like yeah, I could see that yeah. baby yeah. Utopia. So I put that in yeah. a barrel. Oh, yeah. wow, yeah. be phenomenal. Mm. The beautiful thing, other than oh my god, intensity of flavor without intensity of gravity in the beer. You create such a wonderful flavor profile That's without really having it being inundating. Your body is light, and your flavor profile is just so intense, man. How do you pull that off? Focus on the details. Yeah. Because, I I, again, I don't want anything overpowering anything else. And, again, you said it perfectly before, is just focusing on the style of beer. Right. So if you're making an 80 shilling, make an 80 shilling. Yeah. Just make it shine, make it perfect, and that's – uh, again, I mean, every single bottle on this table you see is from a different brewery in Florida because you can see the guys that are doing it. They're getting it done, and they're yeah. nailing it stylistically. So you don't do anything, like, crazy with, like, uh, all these additional adjuncts? or I, I, you know? I'm not it real big on that, no. You don't use any artificial flavoring? Well, I would imagine if you're going to use a triple, you're going to use sugar. Yeah, no, no, you have Candy to use sugar. sugar you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I would consider that a... Well, flavor. let's well let's say like brewing with wheat at home is tough. Okay, brewing with maize at home is tough. Brewing with rye at home is tough because they all stick to mash. What's your experience? They can be. Well, no, no. I use I actually use rice hulls in okay. the majority of the batches. So the rice hulls will make it easier to lotter. Yep. And it'll actually help you. That even means out you your strain for all you. Yes. Guys. So you'll be able to run the liquid out, get the sweet sugar out of the grain. Right. To be able to ferment. And, and you just add those in, not for an actual to to enhance flavor or anything, just to, to, as, a, as a mechanical aspect. As a mechanical aspect, and also as a temperature equalizing aspect. Oh. So it'll actually during help fermentation. Your, no, no, during your mash. So during it'll your help. Mash. Yeah, if you're looking to get 152 to get the most fermentable sugars, it'll it actually help stabilize it because oh. the mash evens out a little bit so do you use one of those really kick-ass little cooler apparatuses or are you like a, a steel pot <laughs> no guy? that's me i might have a uh, orange igloo cooler yeah i want to make one of those top. yeah very right. easy to do i'll show you an article on it and it's great do you build a lot of stuff to help you brew or you buy it or I, i'm you not MacGyver? yeah i'm not really that guy but i've had to you know so i've had to build the the manifold <laughs> screen and uh i shouldn't talk about this but i had to build a heat stick because my stove isn't powerful enough to make the boil <coughs> so you take a heating element from a water heater and plug it into a 220 and Whoa. keep it submerged yeah so you have a ripping boil but it's a hair dangerous what a great idea yeah, that yeah, sounds that dangerous. Sounds well totally what about dangerous. a what about a propane 
propane, propane. Well, I see. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a propane. Yeah. I see. So I'm in a. I'm in a condo, so I'm limited oh. to what I can do. I okay. have to go stovetop. So, okay. Yeah, I don't think that electrical element from the water heater is safe either. <laughs> Unplug it's, the washer and dryer. No, no, to do this good. property. Yeah, exactly man. right. <laughs> <laughs> you know where to plug it in. Just gotta like. You just can. pretend you live in Miami. Then it's in cold Maine. It's in cold. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> the other thing is keep your ceiling fan on because the condensation yeah. comes off. The first time we did it was like a tropical rainforest. And it was literally <laughs> raining from the ceiling. So wow. yeah. <laughs> Poor Liz, she's back there rolling her eyes. <laughs> Where's her metal? <laughs> we're all this. we're working on it. She's doing uh, actually ciders and meads. Oh, Do you really? Okay. Really? Oh wow! Fantastic. Well, next we've show. Had a, we've had a mead expert on here. Before. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, Brad Dahlhofer yeah. from. Uh, That's right. Meadery. <laughs> In Michigan. <laughs> it was a pleasure meading him. <laughs> Your turn. Well, he does the zombie killer and uh, bee nectar. Oh, yeah, okay. Brad Dahl. No, he's a hell of a guy. Yeah. He really yeah, is the, a hell of a guy. The Sam Adams people hooked us up with um, Michael Fairbrother from Moonlight Meadery up in New Hampshire. Yes, and Moonlight his Meadery. is amazing. It's yep. coming down shortly. I think he has a distributor now. Hey, he George. Okay. Yes. What do you think? think we should try the winning beer. I think we should oh, yeah, try yeah, the winning beer with the next show. In the five minutes. Thank God for you, man. I would never be able to keep my show going. Unbelievable. We got a that's, why we, that's why we invite this guy, the guest over here. I, I don't think so. Well, yeah. Opener, George. I'm, I'm not just a guest. Though. You are the guest. I've been here. here. Here we go. One in the kitchen. Let's the beer guys. Let's the well, beer you guys, guys. He's a VIP guest. You guys guest. are beer guys. Do you remember this place, the Lodge in Boca? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's what I have a Chinese addiction. restaurant now. <laughs> I is it really? You have a Colombian. Yeah, is it really? It's a noodle bar. And a Colombian wife to go with it. My wife is Colombian. My wife is Colombian, too. It's a noodle bar. You know, uh, I have a I have a Groupon from there that I never use. <laughs> Call Groupon; they'll probably give you your money back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Seriously. All right, guys, this is straight out of the bottle, and this was probably brewed in the experimental brewery in Boston, right? The super Absolutely. underground. I super actually underground. did even find, visit wow. the super secret experimental. Lab. Georgie, no pictures this is your could new be favorite taken. beer. Pretty really? neat place. Yeah, they do their uh, experimental beers what? and work on efficiency. Yeah, the guy works on a basically a homebrew. Smells oh great. Oh my goodness, I can't believe Sam Adams would well, pour something you know that what? dark. Before we get into this, this guy, might be brewed in Cincinnati or Brennigsville. Excuse too. me, guest. Cincinnati. Before we get into this, guys, <laughs> let me knowledge. thank, let me thank Jennifer Glanville for uh, calling in and taking her time out of her Bruins hockey game so much. Thank you to uh, the whole Sam Adams regime and everybody that was involved in making this show possible. We definitely want to thank Russ Bruner and his lovely wife, Liz, and then, of course, Ed Roberts for putting it all together and just being one hell of a guy. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. Thank you, Ed. So everybody, please, as you enjoy these wonderful home brews that this guy makes the best there is, uh, do it responsibly. Don't drink and drive. Do not overconsume. If you're pregnant, wait the nine months to kittle. Thank you. And uh, do everything that you do with the alcohol very responsible. And let's get into this one wonderful stout okay so definitely a stout why do you say that jason it's just dark does it have some really mm -hmm. wonderful wow. roasty mm -hmm. notes though i was, just, yeah, it's like I was expecting works. something way thicker what and heavier on my tongue this beer from his chocolatier beers was more roasted notes yes right? i don't taste the chocolate you taste roasted because it's well, we need, Yeah, we also need to let it warm up a little bit because yeah. it is. It's cold. Put it's a little icy cold. Put your around it, man. Yeah, it's this, like, this yeah. one you serve like um, like a little bit colder in room temperature. No, but yeah, this like, is right. very smooth. This is, It isn't thick. Yeah. It isn't bitter. It isn't too sweet. And, and again, it's 7.2% right? alcohol, so it is very, you can be a little, it can creep yeah, up on Yeah, there's definitely you. chocolate, but it also has a roasted note that like, you and know what, Jason? Too. What I like to tell people. Yeah, I get the cocoa. Either roasted coffee. But it's just a little bit of that acridity that makes it a stout. And when you bite into, like, that one piece of popcorn that didn't pop, you know, and it gives you a little bit of that burnt flavor. That's I love it. that. That's, that's, <laughs> what you, that's that just <laughs> tiny strain of acridity that will give you that stout nature, and that makes it a stout and brings it a, mm -hmm. over from the, from the chocolate porter or from yeah. the, ball, or for the, uh, the, uh, the robust porter. I get more roasted than I am chocolate, but. That's, well, that's because it's a stout, Jason. What are you not understanding? What does it because he says I should taste chocolate. I didn't make him feel bad. I just asked him a question. It's just it's very it's very subtle. You know, if we had some very um, this is exceptional powerful flavored beers over here. Mm. This is this is very palate cleansing. This is palate cleansing for you. Mm. To compare to some of that other, what was the one that we had before this? Dude, this oh, will, this the, will, this uh, IPA take, Citra. This the IPA this IPA will take like the, no, no, this one. the enamel oh, off that's your right, teeth. This is very dark. clean tasting. It's very nice. It's not. 
It's not bitter. It's not sweet. It's just nice. All of these, all of these beers have been just exceptional. Yeah, it's not. A, I mean, they're it's just not good. a sweet style. All of no. these beers have yeah, been. Yeah, the Belgian dart that had an impact on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finish the bottle; it'll really have an impact. That, that left a mark. <laughs> yeah, I got a buzz now. <laughs> I'm going to the field. <laughs> <laughs> what field are you talking about? The Field Irish Pub and Eatery. Oh, the field. I thought you were going to like go play baseball night. or something. Yeah, <laughs> no, not that field. <laughs> he's going to the field. He's got a keg. He's going to bring it out there. He's going to party oh, in man. the field. I have a keg with my name on it. It's George's own. So it's it's like a movie or game of kickball. Up and coming. He's gonna, we're gonna Russ, can you God, plug? I hope so. Russ, plug yourself. You have any Facebook? You're gonna uh, get on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, soon. Yes, I'm gonna step up the. But where can we find media. you if we want to just? Currently, Bruner Brewing on Facebook. Bruner Brewing on and Facebook. We'll keep guys. you posted. Any pourings, tastings, anything like that. And again, if I'm able to make the leap to pro, which I'm working hard to do, uh, you, you will, my friend. You will. You will. With You're these the beers, best. these are really wonderful. Thank you so much Thank for coming on the show, man. You were awesome, you. bro. Absolutely, absolutely amazing. Uh, all these beers are are exceptional, guys. I wouldn't lie to you. Uh, they are definitely a cut above. And there was not one that was better than the other. They were all just perfect. Perfect. Well, I had a favor. A flavor. What was it? You can have your <laughs> the IPA guy. Like You're the, the reviewer IPA guy. The IPA was fantastic. <laughs> you know why that was so fantastic? It's because it was perfect style for me when it comes to IPAs. This guy makes beer. That's just what like I like about IPAs is not hop flavor, I, I like not bitter. hop bitterness. Right. I, I like, Thank you, I do, Russ. I do like the bitter. Right. But but not. I can't wait till there's more burgers, beers like this on the market that I can go out and, and buy. And I love the tropical part. Yes. Uh, yeah. Everybody have a wonderful evening. Come back next week. We love you guys. Be safe out there. Go out, buy some Russ Bruner long shot. Sam Adams, winner 2013. Broadcasting from the heart of downtown Hollywood. This is SoFloRadio.com.